Please take a moment to silence all cell phones, please. Our mass intentions are for Stephen Rusnick, John Kelly Sr., and Rich Whalen. Good afternoon, and welcome to St. George Church. Today, we are honored to be joined by Bishop Andrew Whippick for the installation of Father Paul Seaman as the eighth pastor of St. George. With this liturgy, a new chapter begins in the life of our parish. Our prayers are for the entire parish and that Father Paul's ministry will be guided by the Holy Spirit. Today's readings speak of harvesting grapes in the vineyard. God calls us to work in the vineyard, each doing our part to ensure a good harvest. We gather together each week in the Lord's name and receive Christ in the Word and in the Eucharist. In today's Gospel, Jesus promises the Kingdom of God to those who produce the fruit. We pray that we may be nourished in Word and Sacrament so that we may go forth to produce fruit for the Kingdom. Please stand now and welcome each other with a wave. Meantime, 
I we enter into this holy sacrifice of mass with contrite hearts because we know that disorder comes to our lives as individuals but also as a family community also. So we stand before God and we ask the Lord, our Lord, to forgive our sins in His unmeasurable mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Lord of the harvest. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to peace. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the tireless servant of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to the lasting life. Amen. Amen. Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it he built a watchtower, and he hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard 
that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing. Break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord is the, of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plants. For he looked for judgment, but see bloodshed. For justice, but hark the outcry. The word of the Lord.
Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the peace of God will be with you. The word of the Lord.
My brothers and sisters, I come to St. George Parish today as a vicar of this area and Cardinal Sukic representative to witness your welcome of the new pastor of this parish, Father Paul Simon. My dear friends, because I am aware of your pastoral needs and I'm confident of Father Paul's qualifications for the office of pastor, I now commend him to you as your new pastor. He's willing to commit himself to the trust and responsibility of ministry to and to with the people of this faith community. If you please. Praise be to Jesus Christ, now and forever. That was only uh, the beginning of a beautiful and somehow long uh, ritual of installing a pastor. When you add to it that a bishop is not known for short homilies, <laughs> then uh, you may imagine, so don't watch at your clock, uh, the homily will be 10 minutes, my 10 minutes, so what am I <laughs> That will be a 10 minute. Uh, this time, which somehow, or maybe even a lot, uh, ruins uh, the order that we are used to in our daily lives and Sunday lives and our uh, professional lives and homely uh, and home lives and so on. This is not normal that we are going through. And I want to call your attention to the readings that today we heard. And I think the church always is right when chooses for us uh, these particular readings that we have on Sunday and today for this installation. I think, at least that's how I think, couldn't be any better. Uh, the church is talking about a vineyard. The church is talking about also a garden. And we city folks, we don't necessarily know what it is. But then God knows, and I will try to uh, allude to these gardens and vineyards in my uh, processing thoughts. Probably most of you never saw a vineyard. Or maybe some of you went uh, because uh, not too far from here, there are some vineyards. But most of you probably just saw Father Ken's garden. <laughs> and uh, if you didn't want to see, he made sure that you saw it. Anyway. <laughs> and I was a beneficiary also of his garden. On occasion, I wish he would bring more often, but he didn't. <laughs> but I, I'm glad that he didn't because his desire to help others, especially poor, in this area to have a healthy, uh, organic fruit of the labor, his labor and other people in the parish and the kids that saw what was going on. What a beautiful way of reaching out to the people, so the people would not only see, but would have taste of the fruit of love of his and all the other people. So I will forgive him for not bringing more offered these uh, fruits because people benefited. And that's why it is the most important, that we take care of, of the people. You didn't see probably how much work it takes to run a garden or run the vineyard. There's a lot of labor 
a labor of love before we go to a vineyard and we pick up the fruit of that labor and also fruit of these roots that we work not only in the soil but also on the soil getting that nutritious juices that we enjoy later on. And that brings me to that garden of Eden. We call it paradise. But think about it. Think about it. What a beautiful garden it was. Fresh with greenery. Trees, shrubs, flowers, grass. And God was walking through that garden with our forefather and mother. It was so beautiful that God Almighty, as the scripture tells us, walked through that garden. And we ruin it, ruin it because our first parents decided they wanted more. That's a very human in us, don't we? We always want them more and more. And in itself, it's not bad. Because doing more, we are able to give out, out of ourselves that more. We do whatever fruit of the labor of more is. But sometimes, having that more and wanting and wanting that more, we overdo it. And that is called sin. And sin was the culprit, sin, particular sin of Adam and Eve. And I'm not going to argue with who was more responsible because I know <laughs> what, what men would say and what women would say. They both were responsible. And they had to leave the beautiful garden that was ordered, that everything worked beautifully. And God wants us to live in a beautiful paradise. A taste of that is Sunday for us Christians. This is where the paradise, the garden, the order, your beautiful liturgy is not just good for your ear and for mine. I enjoy the singing always in this parish and everything being orderly followed because it gives us peace. And St. Paul today says, don't be anxious. Don't be anxious in all the stuff that is going on. Allow through prayer, through being together, allow yourself to get into that order of things. And that's what the garden, the beauty, the paradise is. The ordered elements that work together, I always tell myself, uh, being a city boy uh, as it is, that I always compare that order to Swiss clock. It used to be when these old parts were working nowadays with uh, uh, electronics, it's a different, different story, but it is all Parts, every part was working so well together that produced the time with precision. So this is this is something that that order is, and the church, with all that is going on, in it, is called to be ordered society. That's why we have. The ritual, it's not all put together and let's see what will happen, come up out 
one stronger that would take precedence. Everything is ordered. Parish family is ordered. And hopefully you take that order of the parish to your own family, the smaller organism that needs to work. Today, I bring to the God that God intended for us the order of pastors. He's not just a guy who is very intelligent, by the way, he is. That's what I wanted him to, to be here. He has a lot of uh, properties in him that would, you will benefit from. But also, he has that sense that besides being all these ordered for himself, individual, he opens up himself to work in the vineyard, in the garden, with you and for you, as you notice the, in uh, the words of the, the introduction. It's not only him, for him, but also for you and you for him. So together, you will create that order. And he is put to here as a father figure that would love you like father at home, like mother at home. I don't know how sensitive he is, but I know that as a man, uh, he is a good example of fatherly uh, uh, love. But also that love at home, as you notice, is not only that fuzzy feeling that we have, but father also calls the members of the family, especially kids, to order. Did you hear sometimes when the kids told you, you are the worst father ever? <laughs> Did you hear that? Or you are the worst mother ever? When you call your kids, your family, to order because it's not good for them. And even sometimes the father, out of love, chastises us. Chastises us. Because order needs to be always present. Because order is beautiful. Order is peace. That's why when you come to this church, you sit down and even you bear my voice because you feel not anxious. Because God speaks to us in different ways to each one of here, even through me. And He will speak to, to you through the voice and actions of your Father that we call pastor, the one who tends out the flock. And first thing that I ask the pastor before even I introduce him to the parish family and as do you love already the people? And some pastors would say, I don't even met them yet. <laughs> You don't need to meet someone because that's the act of your will. My will to love. I know. And I'm not asking, do you like them? Because that's another story. <laughs> he may not, not like you all, all the time. You may not like him all the time. But don't you dare. And Father Paul, don't you dare not to love the people of St. George the parish because that's the dictate of the love. And the dictate of love is to call people to order when there is a need for them. That's the fatherly voice that it is. So when he is being installed, he's not just being installed as a administrator of this beautiful church and uh, uh, 
you and Father Ken, they did the miraculous things here. Every time I was coming here, there was something new added. And you paid for it. <laughs> so I suppose he paid it too, uh, as, as a priest in the parishes would do too. But this is not just it, a place. The parish is that state of garden that God puts the beautiful liturgy followed as the church dictates because that's the mother. It, it's not to show his or her invention strings. This is our ritual. This is the order. So every time we come, we will not have the anxiety, what follows what? But the beauty of the liturgy, in other holy service, that's the Greek word that we accepted that sometimes even we don't necessarily uh, I, I, I recall in our mind what it means. It's a liturgy, it's a holy service of God. So this is not the entertainment that we feel good. We feel good when we worship God in such a beautiful way that is holy and beautiful and gives us solace as we participate in the worship of God liturgy. He will do all these things and on occasion probably he will take care especially when there is no electricity and the janitor is uh, uh, somewhere he will have to check that the washrooms are taken care of because if they are not the people will write letters to me <laughs> and believe me this is not, not making it up people do the pastor is not feeding person because the washroom is not taken care of all these things he will do and he has qualities some better, some not so good. <laughs> but he's here to be introduced to you and you to him today as a father, Paul Simon. That's how he's being introduced to you. Because he takes that place, not only presiding church, but that place of a father's responsibility for all these things that happen every hour and minute during the week and also on Sunday. So my brothers and sisters, this is now coming to the end of my 10 minutes. <laughs> Please, as Christians, admonished by St. Paul, don't be anxious. Open up yourself to the Word of God, to the beautiful garden that you create for yourself, but mostly the garden that glorifies God, and God is present here and walks in you in the Holy Eucharist and interacts with you and me. Care for this day. Accept also his ministry as your not only priest, because with the pastor you, you have two for a, 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 a salary of one. You have a pastor and you have a priest. Accept both and open up yourself in that familiar and familial way as members of the family of St. George in Tinley Park to your new pastor, your new father who embraces you today as his new community but I emphasize even more family. Um,
Now we enter this celebratory way of introducing the pastor to particular people of this family of St. John. And uh, I want to present of the parish staff to Father Paul, and I will ask uh, the deacon to read the names, because I don't want to butcher your know, names. <laughs> if you're familiar with it, just make here my name. I know I can say, well, the time is good, but sometimes if my father, I hope and pray that he's in heaven, he doesn't recognize his son when the name is being um, butchered. <laughs> so I don't want to do that, and I will ask Deacon to do read the names. Father Paul, my brother, I now present the parish staff who will assist you in the pastoral care of the people of this parish. As they stand, being called by name, remember to share this ministry in a spirit of mutual trust, common prayer, and genuine concern. Father Tom Kuchlecki, Associate Pastor, Deacons Jerry Suda, Tom Schutzius, Greg Bardos, Joe Panic and Joe Truesdale. Greg could not be with us today. Miss Charlotte Prattle, school principal. Miss Angela Kavanika, religious education coordinator. Is she here? Miss Darlene Georges, business manager. Miss Kathy Rubino, parish secretary. Miss Kathy. How are you doing, Kathy? And Mr. Robert Marcus, music director. My brother, Father Paul, I now call upon Mr. Jim Walker to stand as a representative of Parish Pastoral Council. As they, as they are a voice of your people, remember to be always attentive to the needs of others. And also, uh, Ms. Mary Termak, Vice uh, Chair, and Mr. Ray Schultz to stand as representative of the parish. My friends, I pledge to seek your counsel, guidance, and advice in the spiritual and temporal care of the people of St. George Parish. Remember, my brother, Father Paul, always be a loving father, a gentle shepherd, and a wise teacher to your people so that you may lead them to Christ who will strengthen all that you do as a teacher of the faith I ask you now to lead your people in the profession of our faith and uh, everyone of you please rise and participate in this profession of faith as your uh, pastor each. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. And arose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With firm faith, I also believe everything contained in God's Word, written and handed down in tradition and proposed by the Church, whether in solemn judgment or in ordinary and universal magisterium, as divinely revealed and calling for faith. I also firmly accept and hold each and everything that is proposed by the Church definitively regarding teachings on faith and morals. Moreover, I adhere with religious submission of will and intellect to the teachings which either the Roman Pontiff or the College of Bishops enunciate when they exercise the authentic magisterium, even if they proclaim those teachings in an act that is not definitive. before our altar are the signs of the pastor's ministry, the book of the scriptures, for the pastor teaches, proclaims, and lives the word of God, the Roman Missal, for the pastor presides at our liturgies and leads us in prayer, the oil of the sick, for the pastor cares for the elderly, the sick, and all who suffer, the baptismal candle, for the pastor cares for and baptizes our children, and those who have completed the catechumenate. The collection basket, for the parent stern shares our resources in caring for the poor and the needs of the parish community as a whole. So help me God, I put my name and my hand on this holy Bible and swear to uphold what we have promised. Amen. I earned it and now you will sign it so we would have no uh, ambiguity. People of St. George Parish, will you pray for Father Paul, your pastor, assist him in his ministry, and sincerely welcome him into the parish community? Amen. Will you, in all things, strive to live together in the peace of Christ? Amen. May the God of Give you the grace and strength needed in your new ministry. Through Jesus Christ, may God carry out in you all that is pleasing to the Lord. Through Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. Father Paul, the office of pastor is now committed to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations. Expressing our 
concerns in, in prayer about the intercession of the church. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Cardinal Sukic, and Bishop Wicket, that they may be blessed in God's grace as they lead the church closer to Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our new pastor, Father Paul Seaman, that his ministry may be guided by the Holy Spirit, so that St. George may continue to be a beacon of hope for our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Father Ken Flood, our pastor emeritus, in gratitude for his 17 years of ministry to us. May his retirement be healthy, content, and graceful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the recovery of the President and First Lady and the millions suffering from COVID-19, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to respond generously to the needs of others, especially the sick and the suffering in our community, that the Lord will comfort them and ease their sufferings of mind and body. We also remember those named in the parish bulletin, the Book of Intentions, and the Perpetual Adoration Chapel. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who are deceased, grant that our relatives and friends who have passed from this life May through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and of all the saints, come to share your eternal happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. But we especially remember John Mahill. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, Holy Father, 
Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for through this special mystery, He accomplished the marvelous deed by which He has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty words, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light, and so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.